Hello everyone and welcome to Lesson 2 Part B in our Administrator Guide in Installing SharePoint. We're going to go ahead and look again at some of the, uh, some of the critical issues that occurred post-installation. Okay, so outbound email has not been configured. Well, let's see what this says. A default SMTP server has not been configured. One or more web applications do not have SMTP servers configured. Okay, you can read so I'm not going to bore you to death. We could do this you can go to um, system settings and configure outgoing email if you want okay but again unless you have a whole network at home which you might and that's awesome uh, I don't I have one server so uh, this one here so what we're gonna do is we're gonna install an email server SMTP so initial tasks add a feature okay um, if for some reason you didn't have that window open yeah I'm gonna cancel that I'll just close maybe you close this you can click on this little thing right here okay and the server manager window will pop up then you can go to features there we go add features and you should go down to SMTP server hit add required role services and we're also going to add the telnet client to test telnet is horrible okay uh, it was cool back in the day because it let you remotely access systems but telnet is sent in plain text meaning if you put in a username and password uh, telnetting to something uh, that information is sent as plain text or literally if you put if your password is password a p then an a then an s then an s you get the idea is sent over the line and anyone watching your network traffic can just oh look Leo just logged in and this is his password so never use telnet um, just just so you know we don't even allow it here only SSH secure encrypted remote control protocols I should say I'm gonna hit next next Let's see do I need any this stuff nope you just hit next. FTP, by the way, is also uh, unencrypted. That you should use. You should never use Telnet and FTP. You should always use SFTP or SSH or RDP, which is what I'm actually using here. Remote Desktop Protocol. Anyways, that aside, hit next. We'll hit install. Okay, we'll hit close, and now it'll work. And no, I'm just kidding. We have to configure it. So. We'll go to all programs, administrative tools, IIS version 6. Expand this out a little bit so you can see it. An SMTP server. Right click on here, hit properties. Okay. This can get a little bit um, a little bit more confusing because your settings will depend upon your network. I'm gonna enable logging properties advanced. Okay, so what do we want to log? I'm just gonna go ahead and select everything. Logging will help you trace down problems, especially when you're you know setting this up and, and you're testing, you're trying to receive email to SharePoint and you know automatically enter it into a you know a list or something like that. So hit okay there. <coughs> Authentication, actually before I just buzz through this stuff. You can have uh, authentication to the uh, for people to use the email service. We're going to say no username and password is required. And that's okay if connection. Okay, this is the problem. Let's see connection control grant or deny access to this resource using IP addresses or internet domain names. So, all except the list below. That would mean we did not force people to use a username and password or authenticate and we're letting everyone not good so what we're going to do we're going to add some IP addresses uh, <coughs> the IP address we'll do one to the local host okay and we're also going to add you know what 127 uh, 127.0.0.1 just means this computer by the way uh, and then we're going to do 184106 and if you look up at the top this is actually my IP address if you do not know what your IP address is, um, you can go to start, uh, command, you can type in run, okay? If for some reason you're, you don't have the command prompt up here, type cmd, hit OK, then type ipconfig, okay? And you can look and see exactly what your IP addresses are. IPv4, that's mine. Let's see if I got it in there correct. So, 
Hit OK there. <coughs> relay. Which computer may relay through this virtual server? Only the list below. Okay. Okay, and same deal. If you're really, really smart, you'll realize there's a little bit of a difference between relay and connection control. But for now, just keep it the same. Messages, um, don't really have to worry about it. Delivery, let's see if there's anything in here. Anonymous. Outbound connections, if you need to connect more than a thousand times because uh, you're doing something crazy, here's where you do it. My guess is you're, that isn't a problem. Oh, port 25, all SMTP server 25. Advanced, that's fine. Whatever. You're not going to have to worry about a smart host, and if you do, you probably already know what you're doing. Don't worry about any of this stuff. Hit OK. Now, domains. Uh, let's see. New domain alias. Um, I'm going to do nextstara.com. Um, I wouldn't really worry about this too much. Uh, a domain alias is ultimately like a nickname for this, okay? Uh, I kind of know what I'm doing because, uh, you know, I'm in system admin, but for you, let's see, what would be the best thing to do? The best thing to do would be not to really worry about this because unless you're an advanced user and know how to set up MX records and things like that, you're not going to be able to really send email. You'll be able to send email and test it locally. But in order to get uh, your email to route through, uh, you know, the internet, uh, ultimately you're going to need to worry about MX records and things like that. So, um, yeah. So if you know what you're doing, awesome, good for you. If you don't, don't worry about it. We'll uh, we'll do some local tests. So I've just done that. What we need to do now? We'll go back to central administration. What is this server? This is sp2010.nextstar.local. From address, we'll do uh, SharePoint at let's do nextstara.com, apply address, and this won't actually, this is just for demonstration purposes, um, no reply at nextstara.com. So, cool. Hit OK there. We'll go back to, you guessed it, monitoring, review problems and solutions. Let's go ahead and click on this, click reanalyze now, close, refresh, there it is, okay. <clears throat> so now at least we've got all those big red ones out of the way. So now, let's see here, do, do, do. verify the activity feed, job timer is enabled. I'm going to click on this, yeah, this button is awesome. Repair automatically, hit close, refresh, there it is, look at that. So now we're almost there. Okay, we're missing like an error or two, but you kind of get the idea of how to how to fix these now. Okay, built-in accounts are used as application pool or service identities. Okay, so we kind of went over this already. Using built-in accounts like network service or local system as application pool or service identities is not supported in a farm configuration. The following services are currently running as built-in identities or one or uh, on one or more service. SP trace, SP search, start, run, services.msc, and this actually lists all your services. So let's check these out. Do, do, SP trace v4, okay, do, 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 local service, okay. Uh, SP search 4, okay, that's this, it's disabled because we have enterprise version because we're cool, um, local service disabled but anyways how you fix these is you go in you do exactly what we did before but unfortunately um, the way it's stored in uh, in SharePoint it does not update so even if you do fix this which you should um, and even also keep this service disabled but it will not update and you will get an error there's a way to run some uh, PowerShell to fix that and, and do some other stuff and if you want to research it on the web but ultimately you know, it, it doesn't automatically fix itself. So don't hit refresh, refresh, refresh all the, over like me. Okay, so we've pretty, we've gotten, we've taken care of this one. We've taken care of this one. Well, we haven't, but we know that what the deal is. So now what's this one? 
This one's a little bit of a longer one, and this is going to be your homework. All you need to do is go to our friend Google and Google this, and you will get some pretty good directions on how to do this. So go ahead and uh, take care of the my site issue, and then we'll go ahead and next, let's see, what are we going to do next lesson? Well, probably back up and restore, and we'll, we'll go over this. So for the next, uh, for next time, Go ahead and do this. Also, tell me what you think about me giving you homework. You may just absolutely hate it, or you may be like, wow, I actually learned something. Thanks, Leo. So if you, if you can, let me know how you feel about that. And then next time, we'll go over how to do this, um, and we'll also go over uh, backup and restore. It's just pretty easy, but we'll go ahead and take care of that. So anyways, thanks for joining us. Uh, again, it's been a long one. Um, but anyways, thanks for joining, and I will talk to you all soon.